Well, good evening and bless you. Welcome to another episode of The Day of the Saints. I'm Derek Bat for Dynamic Life Ministries. I trust that your life is dynamic and it's flourishing and it's full of the goodness of God, the blessings of God. It's so good to be together tonight. It's so good to, to have you with us. Please let me know where you're watching from. So bless you. Let us get straight into the Word of God tonight because of time. I thank God for the richness of His Word. I thank God for what he's doing, what he's saying, and how he's just ministering to us and through us by the power of the Spirit of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord, as we continue to talk about the preparation of the harvesters ready for the glorious and wonderful harvest. I thank you, Lord, that even tonight as we're talking about preparing to produce, that, Lord, you've called us to be fruitful. You've called us to produce much fruit. And so, Lord, I thank you tonight for the body of Christ. I thank you for every man and woman, every brother and sister, every minister, every every person that's put their hand to the plow to serve you, to worship you, to honor you. Thank you, Lord, that you found us fit to put us into service. And so, Lord, tonight, I thank you for the richness of your blessing. I thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the way you love us and you bless us. Welcome tonight. Lord bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us and equipping us tonight as only you can. We bless you, we honor you, and we love you now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Good to have you with us tonight. Good to be on as we continue our series. This is session three in the series of preparing for a wonderful harvest, preparing the laborers to go and be fruitful to produce the harvest and the revival in the body of Christ that will bring people into the fullness of their salvation and their purpose in Christ Jesus. So it's good to have you tonight. Let's start by looking at some scripture. And then we're going to unpack what God is saying to us and through us this, this night. If you have your Bible with you, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. The Bible says in verse 12 of Matthew 7, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. God is saying to us, you know, do unto others as you want them to do to us. So if we want people to be fruitful and we want people to magnify God and glorify the Lord, then we ourselves have to do that first to allow others to see that and emulate that and want to and desire to want to serve God and flow with God the way they see us do it. And as I've said before, so many times the church has just got people that are moaning and fighting and squabbling. And that's no way for the church to behave. That's no way for the, for the church to speak with, with authority and victory. And so we need to be in that place where we start to talk with, with a, a new level of authority and certainty in the Lord and be fruitful in it. And further on in, in chapter 7 of Matthew, when we get to, to verse 16, the Bible says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men, and it's a question, do men gather grapes from a thorn bush or figs from a thistle? God says you'll know them by their fruit. And we know that the, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, long-suffering, temperance, and kindness, those are the fruit of the Spirit. And that is what God is wanting us to produce. That's what God wants us to be fruitful of. And so, are we prepared to produce? Are we prepared tonight to produce that fruit which will attract people to Jesus? Are we prepared to produce that fruit that will bring people to the knowledge of a loving Savior? Or are we producing thistles and thorns rather than the fruit of the Spirit of God? When we started this series in session one, if you remember, we spoke about the tree and, and how its roots must be, be strong and go down and find nourishment on the rock and be anchored and, and feed the root system, feeds the rest of the tree. And the trunk has got to be strong so it doesn't bend and bow in the wind and break. And the branches have got to be supple and they've got to be nourished so that they are the place where the fruit bears. And our leaves have got to be evergreen and a canopy of love and joy and peace and goodness and all the things of God need to be in that canopy so that others can come under and find rest and shelter 
of the Lord in, our, in their time of rest or their time of distress. And so God's talking to us tonight again about just paralleling it to the tree. And God says, are we fruitful? Are we a fruit tree? Are we fruitful tonight in what God is calling us to do, what God is calling us to say, is God, what God has called us for purpose? In Luke, if you turn back to, to the book of Luke and you look at Luke chapter 6 and verse 43, 44. Luke chapter 6, verse 43, 44. We're talking about the tree. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit. Nor, do, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Now that's a statement that Jesus is making. He's making it as a statement. Does a good tree bear bad fruit? And can a bad tree bear good fruit? And then he answers the question. He says, for every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from the bramble bush. That's exactly the same scripture, the parallel scripture we read in Matthew. Galatians, if you're remembering Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, God says, listen, Paul's talking to the Galatians, he says, listen, God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. And tonight I want to talk about us sowing the fruit of righteousness. Sowing the fruit that is godly in our lives that will bring forth such an excitement in people that they want to actually come and get what we've got. Now, many Christians don't have that joy, don't have that peace, don't have that excitement for the Lord that attracts people to Jesus. Sometimes, you know, if we had to stand in a lineup, you know, like when, when the police put, put suspects uh, in a line with other people and they ask the, the victims to identify who was the, who was the person, who was the perpetrator. And the, the, the people that were, were the victims can identify them from the lineup. Well, tonight, if we lined up a, with a group of people out of the world, would we stand out as a Christian? Would we radiate the love of God, the power of God, the fullness of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit? Would we radiate, would we produce such fruit in our lives that it would just radiate, and I want to even use the word dominate, that room? It fills the room with the presence of God. The power and purpose of God is so strong in our lives when we are that strong tree, the planting of the Lord. And so we need to make sure that we are that fruitful in everything that we do. You see, unfortunately, folk, and, and you know, I've been saying things that, that I know some people don't like and they say it's too harsh or it's too straight. But you know, our Christianity is not a Sunday movement. We're not only Christians on a Sunday or when we're gathered together with other believers in the house or the assembly or the sanctuary, whatever uh, word you prefer. That's not when we need to act Christ-like. We need to act Christ-like all the time. We need to be in the place where, where our fruit of, of the Spirit of God that is in us just radiates through us and from us in such a way that everyone is just seeing the, the, the fullness of God and the power of God in our lives. And so I want to talk about some, some ABCs, as it were, of what is good seed. Seed. Are we sowing? Are we producing? Firstly, are we producing good seed so that we can sow good seed? See, if we don't produce good seed, we can never sow good seed. And God wants us to be fruitful, but to be fruitful, we have to produce good seed. And when we got born again, the Spirit of God, the seed of God in Christ Jesus entered into us and we became fruitful or we have the ability to be fruitful. Now, you see, many Christians, we don't see ourselves as fruity. We don't see ourselves because many Christians have taken that to want to hold it for ourselves. We've wanted that fruitfulness for our lives. And folks, there's nothing wrong with having that fruitfulness in our own life. But God wants us to have the fruitfulness, not just for ourselves, but so that others can eat and enjoy the fruit of it. God wants us to be in such a place where everyone takes the fruit that we have and they want to share it and say, well, I got this fruit from, from brother so-and-so. I got this 
fruit from sister so and so. The fruit that God gives us is so that we can produce it so others can see the glory of God. We need to be fruitful. So let's talk about how to always have that fruit and are we ready to produce fruit in our lives. The first thing I want to talk about is attitude. Do we have an attitude of gratitude? Do we always, in all our being, walk talk, shine, radiate, whatever words we want to use, do we have an attitude of gratitude towards the Lord? I was with a, just having a, a, a call, a Zoom call yesterday with a friend of mine, a, a blessed minister of the gospel. And we were talking about how many times do we thank God for what we don't have? See, we're always busy thanking God for what we do have. And I thank God for all the blessings. I thank God for everything that he gives us. But there's also times in my life where I want to thank God for what I don't have. And I don't want to be negative and, 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 and be heavy with you, but I want to say this. I thank God for a lot of the things in my life that I don't have anymore. I don't have cancer in my body anymore. I thank God that I don't have cancer. I thank God that I'm healed. I thank God that I've got a beautiful marriage and I've got a loving, adoring wife who loves the Lord more than she loves me. I thank God that I don't have fights and, and, and turmoil in my home. I thank God that I don't have that fear of going home to open the door to a barrage of, 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 of nonsense and fighting and, and heavy atmosphere. I thank God every day for that. In that, I thank God for what I do have. But you see, many times we need to have an attitude of that gratitude that says, Lord, thank you that you took this from me. Thank you, Lord, that you walked me through that situation. Thank you, Lord, that that thing that I had is in my past and it's washed by the blood of the Lamb and it's cleansed and I'm free and I'm clean in Jesus' precious name. You see, we need to say thank you, Lord. We need to have an attitude of praise. We need to have an attitude of worship. But also, we need to have an attitude of fruit producing. You see, many times we give out of our excess. We need to be giving out of our substance. And I'm not talking here financially, although it does come into it. I'm talking about our lifestyle of, of giving all the time. Our fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the Lord. We need to be giving that out all the time. Like Paul said when he was talking about the gifts of the Spirit in Romans. Paul said, I long to come to you that I may impart to you a spiritual gift that you may be established. Our conversation when we get up in the morning and we, we're thanking the Lord and praising the Lord and just blessing the Lord. Our, our attitude should be, Lord, thank you for this new day. Thank you, Lord, that today I get to produce the fruit in my life that you've placed in me by the Spirit of God, that I can produce that fruit that others may see, know, and taste, and just understand that the Lord is good. See, that should be our attitude. Have we got an attitude that is prepared to produce the fruit of God? Many times we, 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 we stay in our bitterness, we stay in our, our despair, we stay in our destruction. Because we're not walking in the fullness of what God has for us, we walk in something else. We walk in the power, the power of, of, of negativity. And God doesn't want us to walk in that negativity. He wants us to produce the fruit. Instead of saying, oh my Lord, it's such a mess. We need to say, praise God for the victory. We have a voice of victory. We have a voice of triumph. We have the power of the Spirit of God that is in us and, and, and flowing through us. And we need to walk in that power and that purpose of God every single moment of our life. Not just the Sunday. It's, this is not Christianity. You see that religion is a Sunday thing. Religion is, is for a Sunday, but Christianity is for an eternity. Praise God. So do we have the right attitude? Let's examine our hearts. Let's examine our attitude. Do we have the attitude of gratitude? Number two, do we always treat others like we want them or how we want God to treat us? I'm not even going to say as we want them to treat us. Do we treat others as we want God to treat us? 
We always want God to be merciful to us. We always want God to be kind and gracious to us. Amen. And that's right, He is. But do we always treat others with that same mercy, that same love, that same grace, and that same gratitude? See, when we start to, to want to produce after God's kind, not after our own kind, we're not building disciples to ourselves. We're not building followers of ourselves. We're building the kingdom of God. We're advancing God's kingdom and bringing people and aligning people to Jesus. We're not aligning them to ourselves. So are we ready to produce? And are we prepared to produce the fruit? Are we treating others as God treats us? You know, that's a quite a hard one. And often we fail. I've got my hand up first. I've, I've failed at that many times. I've got anxious with people. I've got tense with people. Sometimes I've got short with people because I get frustrated. I'm asking the Lord to deal with me in those issues that I don't take it out on people. I don't, I don't speak harshly to people. The Bible says a soft word turns away wrath. A soft word quietens things down. And I'm often outspoken in a sense because nobody else will speak up. And so I'll speak up and then it just causes sometimes a little bit of eruption, a little bit of a, an upset because nobody else is willing to, to say. They're not, they're not prepared, they're not dared to speak out what they're thinking. And I believe as Christians we need to be speaking for the truth. I'll never lie to you. I'll never tell you something that's that is not true. The Word of God is truth. Now, sometimes people don't like the truth or they can't absorb the truth or they don't want to change their life to align to the truth and they get offended. And I'm sorry they get offended, but, you know, sometimes that happens. But when we stand before God and He looks at a brother or a sister and He looks at us and He says, how did you treat them? See, if we want to see a great harvest of souls into the kingdom of God, we've got to learn to treat them as God loves them, as God treats them. You know, I've always said this. If we are the bride of Christ, those that are born again, if we are the bride of Christ, then everyone in the world that's not yet saved is the fiancé of Christ, waiting to be married to him waiting for their day of salvation that they can get married to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus is my best friend. How am I treating his fiance? How am I loving his bride? Am I producing? Am I prepared to do whatever it takes in my life to change areas in my life so that I can be more fruitful? produce more fruit so that others may see and taste that the Lord is good thirdly do we sow abundantly and willingly see if we're going to produce fruit fruits for a harvest and when we have this harvest that God has given us are we stingy with what God has given us are we are we hoarding it to ourselves or are we giving it freely? Jesus said, freely, freely you have received. Freely give. Are we giving away what God has given us by the grace of God? Are we sharing a smile and the love that God's placed in our hearts? By this all men shall know that you are my disciples if you will love one to another. I'm sad to say some, sometimes the church sucks at being disciples. Because we don't love one to another. We're brutish with each other. We're, we're hurtful to each other. And yes, there's sibling rivalry and there's a competition and all of those things in the natural. It shouldn't be so in the church. It shouldn't be so when we're born again of the Spirit of God. Because by this they will know that you are my disciples, Jesus said, if you love one to another. So are we willing to sow willingly and abundantly into people's lives? Do we give them enough time? Or are we rushed because of our busyness and our schedule or our importance? I had a couple come to me once and they said to me, you know, Pastor, we've waited a year to see our pastor and he never has time for us. And that makes me sad to believe that even if the, even if the, the congregation size was, was numerous, surely 
the pastor would be able to see them, even if it's for half an hour, just to greet them and minister to them and share with them. You see, we get so full of our own importance and our own position, our own status, that we actually block people and we put barriers between us and people. If we want to prepare to produce good fruit, we've got to set time aside to sow and, and, and share abundantly. One of the things that we all have the same amount of is time. Every one of us is given 24 hours in a day. Nobody gets any more and nobody gets any less. It's how we use it. And so tonight I want to say, let's be willing to prepare to produce more available time for people in need, people that are lost, people that are vulnerable, people that are hurting. Let's give more time. I know that sometimes we want to project manage it and just give them the answer, give them the word. Well, just do the word and you'll be okay. And that's true, they will. But you know, Jesus loves us and cares for us. Sometimes, you know, like when, when we have a small child and they get hurt, mommy just picks up that little baby or that little child and you know, sort of kisses the anar where their knees sore, where they've grazed their leg or whatever, and just kisses it better, and then just lets them sit on her lap for a couple of minutes, and their the tears stop. Hey, the sore didn't go away, the scratch didn't go away, but just that couple of minutes, just sitting in mommy's arms, just being loved and held and embraced, makes all the difference. Are we prepared to give willingly and abundantly of our time, to people that want to know the Lord and want to get to, to grow in the goodness of God, the fullness of God, are we giving them enough time? Or do we just blow them off and just push them away by, by our importance and our busyness? God really loves us and wants us to, to show that same love, that same care, that, that same consideration. But you know, it's a two-way street. If you're feeling lonely and you're feeling left out or isolated then you've also got to make an opportunity to go and sit with somebody go and sit with your pastor go and talk with him go and sit with your leaders go sit with your your cell group or your connect leader or or, or your home church leader go sit with them and just talk with them and fellowship with them you see they can't be everywhere at once and so they respond to your need but we've also got to put our hand up sometimes and say hey I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling isolated. Won't you help me? And then I trust that the, those leaders will give the time that you need to, to just talk with you and be soft and gentle with you. Velma and I are always open. We have Zoom meetings with people all over the world. If we can't get to see them personally to counsel and just encourage personally, we'll set up a Zoom meeting or, or, or a phone call and just talk and encourage each other and encourage them in the Lord. There's always time, folks. We need to be more generous with our time for the lost. We need to be more generous with our time for the family of the body of Christ. We need to be more generous with our giving of our time and the abundance thereof. And then, fourthly, are we giving God always all the glory? Are we always giving, pointing everything back to God, the audience of one? It's not about us. I thank God for your success. I thank God for your prosperity. I thank God for your triumph tonight. I thank God that you healed and delivered and set free. And yes, you and I had a part to play in that. And by being obedient and diligent and faithful, that's true. But without Jesus, it wouldn't have worked because we can't do it on our own. And so are we always, even though we've had to put in the hard yards, even though we had to go to practice and get fit and turn up for the game, we need to always thank Jesus for what he's done in our lives. We've always got to be quick to point the, the, the blessing back to God and back to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord. Look what you've done. We thank you for it. We honor you for what you've done. It's nothing about what we've done, although we have put in the hard yards. And well done for giving up certain things in your life. Well done for making the change in your life that's making you a better person, a better fruit tree so that you produce more fruit. Well done. But let's always make sure that we give God the glory. Let's make sure that we honor the Lord in all that we do because without the Lord, we are nothing. So let's move to the place where we thank God 
with that attitude of gratitude, with that attitude of thanksgiving, that we treat others as Christ treats us with love, with dignity, with respect. Let us make sure that we give of our time to listen and to make time for people that they feel special because they are. I used to be guilty of not listening because people would start to unpack with me and unbundle to me and I just want to be so quick to give them the answer. If the answer is in the word, the answer is Jesus. Hallelujah, let's just pray. And that cut people off and I'm so sorry I did that. I want to sit and listen to people, hear their heart. I don't, I don't want to hear a story though. I don't want to hear a woe is me. But let's talk about what, what, what are the real issues in our lives so that we can find solutions in the Lord and then we can pray and trust God for the healing. Amen. And I'm going to ask for prayer tonight for, for healing. Let's pray. Let's take time to pray for her. Let's take pr time to find out how other people are doing, how things are happening. So Anna Marie, tonight we want to pray. I'm not sure uh, what, what it exactly is you need to be healed of or healed from, but I'm praying, God, let's reach out to you right now. Everyone that's watching tonight, won't you just lift your hand and pray with me. Let's come in agreement for, for Anna Marie tonight. Father, thank you for your healing. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon our precious sister. Lord, thank you for, for your time that you're omnipotent and ever-present. That, Lord, your glory and your anointing would just come and flow and touch and heal right now. You know better than anyone, Father, the need. You know, Father, where, where there's anxiety and there's anxiousness. And thank you, Lord, for your healing right now. Just to come and to touch, to bless, to heal and to set free. We come in agreement with you, Father. We come in agreement with your word that your healing would flow. And there would just be such an anointing release on our sister right now that she would just feel and receive that healing and walk in it now. In Jesus' name. We thank you for that, Lord. You see, when we give God the glory, let's praise him. Let's thank God for everything that we have. And thank God for the things that we don't have. Let's thank God for our ability to produce fruit. Our ability to see people and lives change because we took the time to care. My wife, Velma, reminded me tonight. She said, remember, your phone is your pulpit. Use it. Share with people. Phone people. Encourage people. Don't ever stop giving love and encouragement to people. And you know, she's so right. She's so right. How many times do we pick up our phone? And we want to talk about what's happening in our day and the goodness of God in our lives. And that's great. And it's good to have those testimonies. But how many times do we just pick up the phone and just say to somebody, how are you doing? How are you really doing? See, most times the first, the first responses we'll get back is their faith statement. I'm blessed. I'm okay. Yes, I'm good in the Lord by His grace. And that's all true. But let's not just let that brush off on us. If we have relationship with people, we have the ability to go deeper with them and say, well, that's great, but how are you really feeling? I just sense in my heart that you're, you're struggling with this or you're struggling with that. Can I pray with you? See, we don't always have to know all the nitty gritty, all the ins, ins and outs. We just got to know how to pray and how to love and care. Are we prepared to produce the fruit that will be a change for somebody's life? Are we prepared to go the extra mile to walk with somebody and never give up with them? Some people have stopped being my friend. They've cut me off. But I still love them. And if they phoned me at 2 o'clock in the morning because they were in trouble, I'd be the first to respond. Because my life and my actions are not governed by their actions or reactions. My life governed by what God's called me and assigned me to do. Are you ready tonight to produce more fruit? Remember in John's Gospel, John 14, God says he comes and he prunes. 
He takes away all the branches that don't produce fruit. So that the branches that are left can produce more fruit. Well, sometimes God wants to prune us. And that pruning is not nice. It's not comfortable. And it's certainly not pleasant. But God does it, see, because he loves us. And he wants us to be fruitful. And he wants us to produce more fruit. And that's the will of God for our lives, to be fruitful, to multiply, subdue the earth, to rule and reign, have dominion in Christ Jesus. That's what God's wanting us to do. Don't be isolated tonight. Don't have one season of fruit and the rest of a life of barrenness, emptiness. Let's produce fruit every day of our lives, the fruit of the joy of the Lord, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the Spirit. Let's produce fruit that others will see and want to come and receive of the Lord. God gave us such abundance. Even our testimonies bear witness to the goodness of God. Bear testimony to the blessing of God. Let's be quick to share what God has done in our lives and what he'll do for other people. Let's be quicker to listen to people and draw them closer and influence them, not just with words, but with love and with action. I trust you're ready to produce more fruit than you've ever produced. I pray for an abundance of harvest of fruitfulness in our lives. That might mean your business may, may prosper and grow. That might mean that your family situations will change and there'll be peace and harmony. Whatever it is that you're trusting God for, I pray that your fruit will be produced, that others will see and know what God can say. I want us to be fruitful. God commanded us be fruitful and multiply. The fruit that we need is the fruit of the Spirit the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the Lord. Let's prepare ourselves to produce that fruit which will bring forth a mighty harvest. People will see you and want what you have. See you and long, desire, just grab you, pull you out of a crowd, stop you in the supermarket because they just see something that they've never seen before. They see the power of God flowing through our lives. You see, many, many Christians want a pulpit. Many Christians want a platform. God doesn't need to give us a pulpit, doesn't need to give us a platform. He's given us a community wherein we can radiate the love of God and share the goodness of God. So this week, let's go out there and let's go and produce more fruit of the Lord than we've ever produced before. When you talk to farmers, they talk about a bumper crop. This year has been the best crop of my life. Well, I pray that the week ahead of us is the most fruitful week of your life. I pray God would bless you from this word tonight. I pray God would just infuse you and empower you with this word tonight. Put a mark on, a, on your fridge door Count, put an empty fruit basket out tomorrow morning. And say, Lord, I want to fill that basket, not with natural fruit, but with the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit that you've placed in my life, the fruit of my labor, the fruit of the gifts, the callings, and the anointings on my life. Let them all produce fruit, Lord, that will allow others to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. I trust you being blessed. Thank you for our partners. Thank you for those folk that are with us and have, have walked with us and, and, and spent time with us in the Lord. Thank you for the, for the commitment that you make. Thank you for those that watch and view our YouTube channel. Thank you for those who follow us on Facebook and stream with us on, on our, our broadcasts and our programs. I trust you've been richly blessed. Highly favored tonight of the Lord. If this word has blessed you, please share it. Please Share it with your friends and those that you influence so that others can become fruitful also. Thank you for those that give. Thank you for those who sow financially into our ministry. We love you and appreciate you. 
But more importantly, thank you for those that love us. I want to say especially tonight for all of those that show your love and appreciation. Thank you for that. That really helps us. That blesses us. Because we also sometimes carry burdens and, and carry the weight of what we're doing, the responsibility. And it's so good when people just send me a message and say, Derek, we love you. Thank you. That word touch me. That word bless me. Not that we're looking for man's praise. But I want to tell you, if you encourage others, you yourself will be encouraged. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I pray that this week you have a dynamic life. Not a routine life, not a mundane life, not a, certainly a boring life, not a tr tragic life. But I pray this week coming you have a dynamic life in the Lord. That God would radiate and manifest in you and through you. That others would know and see that He is good. We love you. We bless you. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. May God richly bless you, touch you, and prosper you in Jesus' mighty name. May you have a voice of victory, a voice of an overcomer with an attitude of gratitude. Good night and God bless you.